Joining us now is Shift4 CEO and founder Jared Isaacman. Jared, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me, Morgan. Um, so, so you so you focus on the services part of the economy uh, in terms of servicing and providing the software and infrastructure for restaurants and casinos and hotels and um, venues and, and 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 this part of the economy where we know. Consumers have continued to spend resiliently and where inflation has continued to be sticky and remained higher than the Fed uh, perhaps would like to see. What are you seeing in real time right now in terms of transactions and in terms of consumer behavior? Yeah, thanks, Morgan. So, um, you know, Chip 4, I mean, we touch nearly a quarter of a trillion in payment volume across our, our gateway and our N10 payment platform. So we have pretty good visibility across restaurants, hotels, you know, travel and leisure, lots of dis discretionary spending locations. What I'd say is, you know, business is good, which, um, you know, we're, we're intending to grow payment volume well in excess of 50% this year, which is largely a factor of, of, of taking share. Um, but I will say when you drill down to a same store sales level, things are much better than we thought. Now, travel, uh, travel and leisure is, is continuing to be very strong. Uh, I mean, again, much better than we would have thought at the beginning of the year. Um, I would say even restaurants are doing better than expected. Um, you know, now that's not to say it's at the same euphoric level that it was at in, in years past, but if you ask us from looking at the data and what we're seeing so far, I'd say we're on a trajectory that more looks like a, a soft landing than anything else at this point. Interesting. And when I hear you talking about taking market share, I mean, that's exactly the question I'm going at with you is how much of this is company specific and some of the strategy that you're implementing versus just a reflection of uh, an economy that has remained more, re more resilient than everybody, at least up until now, uh, expected it would. Yeah, I mean, so really in, in both parts, I mean, just in the shift for perspective, sure, we're able to differentiate when um, and that's what's driving, you know, in excess of 50 percent year over year and 10 volume growth. But when you really drill down to just same store sales, which is how is the restaurant doing last year? How is it doing relative to this year? Hotel, that type of comparison. And I'd say we went into this year not that optimistic. I mean, everybody was fearing the worst at the beginning of the year. Everything is doing much better than expected, which is probably consistent with. Uh, with the Fed chair's commentary that in inflation is, you know, more persistent. Um, so, yeah, hotel travel, leisure, it's going to be a great summer. Restaurants, people are still going out to eat. Maybe, again, not to the same level that we, we would have seen in, in more euphoric times have passed. But, again, it, it's, all tra it's all tracking towards much more of the soft landing than the sudden slowdown that I think many feared, um, you know, at the beginning of the year. Jared, how much are we still in revenge travel kind of post-cabin fever mode? I mean, I understand that there's a certain segment of the consumer that's maybe trading down, but is there another segment that's still just getting out there because they couldn't before? No, it, it, it is, to be honest, it, it is, it's a great question. In terms of like the revenge travel, like I'm tired of being locked up and I'm going out and living my life, uh, that was last year. And, and honestly, even to some extent, it was in, it was in uh, 2021. Uh, I think what we're seeing now is just some sort of a, you know, um, somewhat of a return to normal. Um, you know, people are going to a lot of travel and leisure destinations versus a year or two ago it was anywhere, right? I mean, even like, uh, you know, small motels near uh, like national parks, we're seeing bookings like they've never seen before. It was like there was like this vengeance to get out and, um, you know, um, make up for lost time, if you if you will. And now it's like it's a little less of that. And it's a little bit more back to, you know, Las Vegas, South Florida. I mean, typical, you know, um, you know, vacation, uh, vacation travel pattern. The difference is it's just prices are higher than they were before. And that's what's being reflected in the in the volume and obviously consistent with with the Fed chair's comments. All right. I got one more question for you on shift four before we shift gears. Uh, and that is the fact that you do capture millions of consumer data points with all that data that's coming in and coming through your uh, through your platform and your infrastructure. What does that mean in terms of something like generative AI, which we talk about so much? Yeah, I, you know, look, everybody loves talking about AI, and I'm, um, I mean, we, we, we catered a lot of restaurants, hotels, uh, like I said, casinos, sports stadiums. I'm not trying to say that your restaurant experience, your hotel experience is going to be dramatically changed by AI. I think some people are maybe, you know, playing that up a little bit. But what I will say is within the world of, like, operational efficiencies, um, you know, we have 2,500 employees. Like, I can guarantee you this, you know, the, the measures we're taking to implement AI uh, in terms of uh, some of our internal systems is improving productivity in a big way. And that translates into margin and free cash flow, things that investors care an awful lot about in this, um, you know, higher interest rate environment. So there, there's absolutely a benefit for every industry out there. It just may not be as, you know, um, may not be as transformational from like a customer facing perspective as others are talking about.